Hey, and thanks for joining me on this video today where we're going to design a mobile menu using the new responsive engine. So if you haven't already, actually, there is a great video on this channel about a 10 minute crash course of what the responsive engine is, uh, how to use it, how to make selections as you're building things. But then this video is going to extend on that and you're going to get to see uh, examples of why we choose uh, the, the containers and positionings and everything we do uh, to create a mobile menu. So let's dive right in here on the left hand side under containers, we're going to grab a floating group. We're just going to drop that onto the page. And just to give you an idea of the page that I'm working with here, uh, we're working in a 320 by 580 uh, page. And what that allows us to do, and basically in the world of mobile, you want to start with the smallest dimension side. So like the iPhone SE is 320 pixels, and then it'll expand out from there. So what we're going to do, and we're working in a column because columns basically mean things are going down the page, down a column and then row. Uh, and this is a great thing to note here that we're going to choose a row because uh, a menu, you mean think about it, it's got, we're going to go with like home classes, library and profile for this example. And these are things that are going across uh, the row. So hence we're going to choose row and then we're going to have it not be fixed with uh, under here, here under appearance, we're going to say that it floats relative to the bottom, uh, floating left is fine and above all elements. That's exactly what we want. So for the layout here, um, I am going to give it a height of 60 Then I'll make it fixed height. Uh, that's just, you know, nice for uh, something that's going to always be static, a mobile menu, and then, uh, no need for a minimum width. So next up, we're going to drop a group into here. And actually, first I'm going to do some good cleanup naming and then note that for this group one, we're going to call this group menu. And for this one, we're going to call it or we're going to have it be a column. And the reason we're going to have it be a column is because it's going to contain an icon at the top and a piece of text or a label underneath that. So we'll start with 6060 and then we'll probably change that. Uh, but basically, just to give us some space to work with, I'm going to grab a material icon here, a special icon from a plugin. And we're going to grab a home icon there. And then let's see for the height. I'm going to just say, let's go with like something like 25. And then for the appearance, for the color, we're just going to note down, copy that onto my clipboard and we're just going to note what that is. Uh, and then we're going to center that. And then, so next up, we're going to grab a piece of text, drop that in. And we're just going to say that that is home. And I noted that, uh, color so that I can use it here and basically have everything match up very nicely. Uh, okay. So I think I'm going to go with, so basically this determines the height of this little element here. I'm going to go with uh, size 12. Nope. Just kidding. 14 is where it's at. I'm going to center that text and then for the layout of this, uh, no minimum height. We'll just fit the content to the site itself. Uh, no minimum width fit the width to the content of that little item as well. So basically what we're doing is we're just, you know, these elements are very defined, very compact uh, in and of themselves. And then icons, they're slightly different. Uh, we don't need this full width, uh, probably 25 by 25 you can just have it be what it is. And then at the bottom of that, I'm just going to give it uh, like a bit of space in between these two. So five. Great. So now these are sitting here inside of this uh, other group. And then now with this group, we're going to make some decisions about how to, uh, best utilize it. So what I'm going to do is, uh, starting, I want to get some things set up. So here, um, let's just say fit to fit to the content. And then I'm going to grab this and I'm going to do a control C copy paste. And then I'm going to paste a couple of these into this area. So now over here on our row, we can see some options to very easily spread these menu items out. I think this one probably looks the best to me. And then, I, like I said, we're going to call this one, uh, I think, classes. And then we'll call this one library. And we'll call this one profile. And one of the things I'm going to do here for this, just so we have everything nice, uh, let's see, let's group um, classes. You know what, I said menu, I meant home. And then we're gonna go here, group library. And this will help us when we set up the workflows for when these buttons are clicked, because then we're not just looking at a bunch of uh, things that are, you know, 
copies and we don't know exactly what they are. So cool. Uh, let's see for icons quick. I'm going to go with like, uh, let's see, school, maybe that for classes, perhaps a book for library, and then a person for this profile. Okay, cool. And then I'm under here under, under appearance. I'm actually going to give this a background style of a flat color and a slight uh, gray so that we can just see what's going on. Okay, cool. So uh, basically, now if we take a look and we just preview this, just some working stuff here. We're going to refresh and get to, get a fresh look at this. We can note the thing that to note with the new responsive engine is that across the various device sizes, we can see how the menu works really seamlessly for the responsive uh, layout. So fantastic. Uh, next up, we're gonna actually create in this video some navigation for this. So one thing we've done, and perhaps you've come here from another video, or if you haven't, you're gonna learn what uh, we're gonna be doing here because in the world of Bubble for mobile apps, you wanna create everything on one page because what's going on once that gets translated to the format for the uh, for Xcode for or Swift for the uh, Apple App Store and Java for the uh, Google Play Store. Basically, in that world, it just takes this URL, and we only want one URL to be working with. So uh, that means we're going to start. We're going to work and do some things here. Uh, if you'll note that, let's see, let's see if I can show off this URL. So basically, I've got a URL here for my um, one page thing, this mobile demo, that is the page, but then these query string parameters are what we're gonna use to control um, the navigation and navigating around. So basically, when this is clicked, we're going to go to a page, and it's this mobile demo page, and we're gonna send query string parameters of nav, and we're gonna send, when the home one is clicked, we're going home and we don't need any data there. And then I'm just going to copy and paste a couple of these in. So basically right now we're setting up the actions of what happens when things are clicked. So this is when the home is clicked, uh, we have classes, we have library, and we have profile. So now when all of these buttons are clicked, let's start with classes, and then library, we'll update this parameter, and then profile, and then we'll see in a moment how we use these. So when these are clicked, it will change those parameters, these little parameter things here at the top of the page. And once those are changed, our, our page will know, we'll have some data to know about, hey, what page are we on just exactly? And to see those pages, or to see that in action, we're gonna draw a group in here, and we're going to give it, uh, let's see, just a black color. Just pick some default ones here. Uh, layout, we're just gonna say align to parent, and then we will just remove any of that. And then we'll say here for a conditional, this is where we're now going to use them. There's this, if you search for get data from a page URL, where the parameter that we defined called our nav parameter is when it's home, we'll say make this element visible. And so this is going to be group home. Cool. And obviously this group would be, you know, something that gets actual content in it at a later point in time. But for now, we're gonna do that. Um, and let's see, we wanna make sure that one thing with this group home and all of these is that we collapse when hidden and this element is not visible upon page load. Cool, and we'll wanna make sure that we do that for this one. So this is going to be, that was group home. We're gonna have group uh, classes here. And we'll give this one a different color. So this is just so that we can show ourselves that we are navigating around. Classes, uh, we'll copy that. Oh, and uh, let's see. The one thing we need to do before we are done with classes totally is that this one shows when that nav parameter is classes. And then for this next one, this one is library. And we'll change this parameter for a library. We'll change the appearance of this for the color. Say it's this red one. And then one left here now for the group profile. Change this. 
parameter or profile. And so now we've got this logic that controls what's seen when. And we just need another color here. We'll just go gray. And then we're going to reload this. And basically I'm loading it on this URL where it's the one for home. And then we can see as we click through here that we have a working menu here that works on various device sizes using Bubble's new responsive engine. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please like or subscribe, and I'll see you in another video.